Turn with me in your Bibles, and I'm going to try to look at the Word of God this morning. And even though we're looking at the very beginning, uh, just uh, Genesis chapter number 1, although that's been centuries ago, and I, I believe this, uh, I believe that there is still application of this Scripture for today. Amen. So we're going to look at that. And I'm going to look at what the Spirit, what the Spirit of God does best. Amen. I know it's not Pentecost Sunday. That was June 9th. And so I'm not a month behind. And I know that we are Pentecostal. And so I want to look at um, the just what the Spirit of God does best. If you talk to folks and you, you, you say, what do you know about Pentecost? They'll say, oh, that's where folks like, like to sing and shout and dance and get excited. Uh, I, that's all true. Amen. I love to worship God. It is emotional, isn't it? Amen. Things about life is emotional. Uh, and I tell you what, if I told you I'm going to give you a million bucks, I'm sure that you would get very emotional. You would probably be excited. You'd probably be thinking about how you're going to spend that money before I even gave it to you. Uh, if uh, you found out that you uh, won a brand new vehicle, you would probably be so excited you wouldn't know what to do to contain yourself. Uh, it, it is emotional. And so the things of God is emotional. We are emotional people whether we think it or not. But I'm not so much going to look at just the emotional side because I, you know, the emotional side, uh, it goes much deeper than that. The Spirit of God and what the Spirit of God wants to do for us. Because the deepness makes us emotional. Amen. So let's look at what God has for us as we look at His Word. Uh, let me just say this. When we look at the Spirit of God, uh, the, the, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, uh, uh, I think about this. Jeremiah posed this question. And he said this. He said, can a leopard change its spots? And we may ask the same question about ourselves. Can I change how I respond? Can I change who I am? Can I change my outlook of things? Amen. Uh, how many of you have ever watched uh, 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 Winnie the Pooh? Is it Eeyore? Or Eeyore? Is that right? It's always negative and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the downer and the, and the outer. How many have ever met people like that? You don't have to raise your hand. Or maybe you've imposed yourself as being that way before where you are Debbie Downer and uh, 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 Doug Doubtful. You know, whatever uh, you want to label it where you uh, can't go left. And you may say, I can't change myself. But, you know, Jeremiah was already giving us this insight into a one word definition of Pentecost that can change us. Amen. Uh, uh, fearful people at Pentecost were changed. There were distrustful people at Pentecost who were changed. There were bitter and disillusioned people at Pentecost who were changed because of the Spirit of God. And so uh, I read a true story about a man who was telling about his childhood growing up. And he said that he was one of 16 children. And so as a parent, I want to say, bless that mom and dad's heart. <laughs> 16. Wow, 16. I say, if that's what God wants and God has given you that desire, bless your heart. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, so I'm moving on now from that subject. And so here it was, uh, one of 16 children, he tells about his younger brother, who they lived in an area where a, a building was getting its roof um, tar upon it, T-A-R, I know I'm hillbilly, so I say that a little funny, and so I'll try to say it for you to understand, but the, the roof was being tarred, and so uh, 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 his brother came up missing, and they didn't know where he was, and so his mom went out looking and found him in a barrel full of tar. She said as he was, she was pulling that boy out of there, she said, son, it would be an easier job to have another baby than pull you out of here. <laughs> That's how she expressed it. It would be better to have a brand new, and her, her, her reason for saying that was that to get you out of this car and get it all cleaned up off of you, it would be better to have a baby that didn't have this all over them. And so sometimes we may look at that and there's truth 
in that that we think our nature is so tainted, our nature is so dirty, our nature is so marred from life. How can we ever change this? It would be better to be born again. Wow. Well, that's what Christ has allowed to happen to us through the Spirit of God that we can be born again. That the nature can be changed. The dirty can be cleansed. And that dirt isn't just sometimes sin. We think of dirt as being sin, but, 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 but it's other things in our life that cloud it and clutter it and keep us from living the dream that we want to live or living the life that God has intended for us to live. And so in Genesis, the Bible says in the beginning, this is the beginning of all time, particularly the beginning of creation, the universe, when things are unformed, unmade, uh, 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 uncreated. And so here it is, the Bible says in the beginning, God, when He created the heavens and the earth, this could be translated when He created the entire universe, Amen. In the beginning, God, when He created the entire universe, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Here it is. There's no sun. There's no moon. There's no light. And so some people say this is just this catastrophic happening that the earth comes into creation. But we know that there is an orchestrator, that there is a creator. Amen. And the authority of God's Word starts out at the beginning of that. Amen. And He says, and the Spirit of of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, amen, moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. It is significant that we realize that here at the beginning, the Spirit of God is moving and working. Amen. The Bible says that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So I want you to imagine with me, if you would, let's go back to Genesis chapter number 1, amen, verse number 1, not just in text alone, but let's go back there and imagine and, and get that picture created in our mind where here it is, the world is completely dark, amen, it is, it is a, 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 a cosmos that is chaotic, it's confused, amen, it's a universe that is without light, it is a universe that is without life, and it's a universe that's without love. And so uh, we don't have a light, and so there's no, there's no light that's being able to be created. There's no light that's there. And you know what happens when there is life? There is love that begins to happen among people and among creation. And how many of you, I don't worship creation, but how many of you love creation? I loved yesterday. I loved getting outside and being in the sunshine. It made me feel really good. I loved the breeze that was blowing. I love when we can go away. We went down Friday night. We went down uh, to, to, to uh, uh, Millersburg there to, to the park. And we were taking some pictures as the sun was setting. It was beautiful. Uh, the sun was just amazing as it began to set. And we were watching the, uh, the, the thousands, if not the millions, of flies that were flying off the, the river. I mean, it was perfect to watch the creation of God uh, as we were there. And, and so there was this love in the air. And I enjoyed holding my wife's hands. I enjoyed getting to let the girls go down the slide and, and, and then uh, uh, climbing and doing new things that they never did before. There was a lot of love. Yesterday, I watched my girls who rode their bike for the second time and they just took off and that was it. I mean, that was just it. And so I enjoyed getting to see them and cheering them on. And, and so there was a lot of love that was going on because there was life and there was life and then there was love. But creation knows none of that before the Spirit of God moved. The Bible says that here is this place where there is nothing. But then the Spirit of God moves. And we have what we experience today. I want you to imagine a person's life with no hope. Imagine a person who's fallen and given up Imagine seeing a family who's suffering and dying. But I want to say this. But then the Spirit of God moved. Where there's no hope, but then the Spirit of God moved and there is hope. Amen. Where there's suffering and dying, but then there is hope. Amen. Because the Spirit of God moves. And so what God did for the cosmos, amen, what God did for the universe, amen, in Genesis chapter number 1, those beginning verses where there was nothing, 
here we find that God's Spirit moves and He gives something. Amen. And so I want you to imagine the Spirit of God. That is Pentecost. That is what the Spirit of God still does. Where there's darkness, where there's no light, where there's no light, where there's no love, where there's nothing but chaos. And then the Spirit of God moves. Amen. That's how God can restore marriages. Amen. Where there seems to be brokenness and no love and hurt and anger, but God restores. Where there's relationships that are broken. Where we have a bad relationship and a bad self-image even of ourselves, but then the Spirit of God moves. Amen. It changes all of that. And then the Spirit moved. I love that. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. And so we look at men from past, ages past. Isaiah wrote, he said, For I will pour out, and he was writing this under the unction of the Spirit of God, For I will pour out a, a water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry ground, and I will pour my Spirit out upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring, and they shall spring up um, uh, uh, as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. Amen. God's Spirit will spring up and give blessings, as I said. Ezekiel said, and I will also give you a, a new spirit, and I will put it within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. When the Spirit of God moves, it changes us. The stony heart goes away. The heart of flesh is put in. Joel said this, he said, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters uh, shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon your servants and upon your handmaids. And those days will I pour out of my spirit. Uh, uh, Joel said, it's going to happen. The spirit of the Lord is going to move. And then we find that on Pentecost, Jesus has went away. We know the story. His followers had seen him uh, uh, 50 days earlier. They had seen him as, as he gave his life. And there was mourning. There was sorrow because he was gone. He was no longer there to give them teaching and, and to, to give them understanding and to be God incarnate with it. And so he goes away. But he says, I will go away, but I will send you another comforter. Go and wait and tarry. And so there they were in the upper room, 120. And they were waiting for, for the promise of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Amen. And as they're waiting, here we find the Spirit of God comes and their lives were changed. The Spirit of God changes lives. It always has. It always will. The Spirit of God, when it begins to move, amen, things are changed. Where there's darkness and chaos, where there's no love and no light, the Spirit of God comes and changes those situations. So in the beginning, the Bible says there was God. Amen. A God who's love. A God who's holy. Who is this God? He's a creator. He's a sustainer of the universe. Amen. He is he's the only a God in heaven and earth. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's almighty. He's all consuming. Amen. But I need to tell you that the Bible says that God is also a spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And when we look at that word spirit, Numa is the word of the Greek. It means this. It means breath. The Spirit of God. The breath of God. Amen. We may not be able to see it. He is breath. He is wind. He is an invisible force. And so when we look, Jesus said this, that a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. And Luke chapter number 24, verse number 19, God is a spirit. He's without body. But I want to question you. Are you listening? This is my question. Because we are so, in our mind, we are so trained. We are so equipped to think that when we don't see someone's body, they're not there. I see you, Brother Craig, today, but I didn't see you since Tuesday. You weren't there. And so I knew because I didn't see you. Brother Josh, I didn't see you, amen, before today, within the past week. I didn't see you. Your body was not there. But we condition ourselves to believe that if we don't see it, that it is not there. 
But I need to tell you that just because there is nothingness to our eyes, amen, and it seems like there is bodilessness to us when we think about God, it does not mean that there is nothingless. God is there. Amen. His Spirit inhabits the entire universe, the entire cosmos. He's all over the world. Amen. He's beyond the world. The Spirit of God is there. And so we need to know that God is with us. Amen. Just because we can't touch Jesus, the Emmanuel God with us, that, 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 that part of God who came incarnate, He wrote Himself in flesh. Remember, God has a tripart nature. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. The Spirit of God is working in the world today. Amen. And so God became visible through His Son, Jesus Christ. But Peter said that you and I can still be eyewitnesses of God. How do we do that when we can't see Him? Because we know His Spirit is working and moving. If you breathe, you don't see it, but you feel it and know it's there. Hey Amen. You know it is there. I love what Romans says. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, that, uh, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body that is dead because of sin, but, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised Jesus Christ up from the dead dwell in you, He shall... <clears throat> Excuse me. Dwell in you. He that raised Christ up from the dead also shall quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Amen. When we ask Jesus to come into our heart, Jesus Christ doesn't leave the throne room of heaven, but the Spirit of God makes Jesus Christ real to us. And He comes into our heart and into our life. And He quickens us. We're kind of like the cosmos that had nothing, but then the Spirit of God begins to move. And all of a sudden, when the Spirit of God begins to move, there is light. Amen. Where we once walked in darkness and ignorance to the Word of God, now the Spirit of God makes the Word real to us. Where once we were dead men walking around, that spiritual man was dead, but Christ has made him alive through the Spirit. And guess what else we have? We have love. We have a love for God. We have a love for others. We have a love for ourselves like none other. You know why? Because the Spirit of God moved. Do you believe in the Spirit of God moving today? He's moving all around the universe. Have you allowed Him to move in your heart, in your life, in your situation? When He moves, He changes that chaos and that darkness to light. God spoke, but it was the Spirit of God working with the voice of God that brought light. Amen. The voice of God speaks and the Spirit of God works. Is He working in your heart and in your life today? Amen. Christ in you. God's Spirit. I want you to think about this. All of you are probably, or most of you, I don't want to just assume, are familiar with emblems or symbols that represent the, the, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. You think about this, a flying dove. Does that represent the Spirit of God? Think about this, what about flowing oil? Or what about a gushing fountain? Out of your belly shall flow rivers. Of the, that's the Spirit of God. Amen. What about a blowing wind? The wind blows where it listed. When the, the, on the Pentecost, the wind of God blew in that upper room. So it's a blowing. You think of streams or river, or you think of fire falling upon someone. But I need to tell you something, that when we look at this, amen, we look at all these emblems. Think about these emblems. Just think about one maybe that I said. No, I want you to think about it. Every one that I told you was something in motion. Wind blowing, fire flowing, oil flowing, rivers, fountains gushing. Amen. It is something that is in the state of motion. I want to ask you something this morning. We live in the state of Pennsylvania. I didn't grow up here. I didn't have Pennsylvania history. However, I do know a few things. I do know that we're bordered by New York. I know that we're bordered by New Jersey. I know we're bordered by Ohio. I know we're bordered by Maryland. Is that, am I correct? When the wind blows in the state of Pennsylvania, 
If you travel uh, to the New York border, does it stop at the border of Pennsylvania so that it doesn't go into New York? Does it stop at the border? Or does it stop at the border of Maryland because we don't want it to go any farther? We keep it contained to Pennsylvania. It doesn't know. The wind does not know borders. And I need to tell you that God does not know borders. As His wind is blowing, He blows throughout the world today to every individual. I'll get to more of that in a little bit. Amen. But He blow, blows into every life as diverse as we are and as distinctive as our situations may be. We are unique and unique to whatever situations we may experience. However, the wind of God does not stop blowing at, at, at your border because you're just Think that your situation is different, but the wind of God blows in every life, and God wants to give hope and life and life and love to every individual because He blows beyond borders. It's interesting. The Bible says that the rain falls upon the just and the unjust. Amen. Rain does not discriminate who it, 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 who it touches, it blesses. How many of you have noticed that before? The rain falls. I've noticed this. We've had somewhat of a rainy summer. And so the rain is falling. And as it falls, I appreciate that I don't have to go out some days and water the plants that I need to water in my house. However, it also waters the weeds. And it waters my grass that I have to cut. So it falls upon anything. It does not discriminate. You may be here today and thinking that God is discriminating against you because of a certain situation. Situation in your life or where you may be, can I tell you that that is a falsehood provided to you from the enemy that God does not discriminate who He reigns upon and who He blesses. He doesn't care about age. He doesn't care about gender. He doesn't care about specifics. God reigns down. Thank God for the moving of the Spirit. And I think about this. Amen. We look at our continents, if I remember correctly, uh, there are seven continents, there are seven seas. As we look at that, uh, the, the, the wind blows upon us all seven continents. You look at the seashore, it, it, the waves come in the same upon every seven continents. Uh, you find that, that there, there, there are waves and winds upon every ocean. Amen. It doesn't matter. We serve a mighty God, amen, who's able to be in motion to everyone across every continent, across every sea. God's Spirit is able to move. He does not respect. He does not have boundaries. Amen. He works and moves and lives. For the businessman, for the caregiver, who feels under the burden of, of what they carry, amen, the Spirit of God is mighty in motion to move today. Amen. To the parent, to the teacher who feels unappreciated or that they're not given the respect that they deserve. Amen. The Spirit of God still moves to encourage today. Amen. To the grieving loved one. Amen. The Spirit of God still comforts and is able to pour oil into wounds. Amen. Beyond boundaries today. Amen. For the person who needs direction, wherever they are, whatever their direction is in their life, the Spirit of God still moves to provide direction. Amen. Even in the eons of the past, the Spirit of God moved to bring light and to bring direction. Amen. God is still moving in a glorious way even today. Do you hear me? Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and without void and darkness upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He's in motion. He works and moves. But I do believe this, that the wind blows, blows where it's sought. Where it is sought. For the sake of time, I won't share everything that I was going to, but God must be allowed to move. God must be allowed to move. Spurgeon said this, the prince of all pe preachers, he said, he said, help us, Lord, as he came to the pulpit. My prayer, prayer that I prayed thousands of times during services before preaching. While I'm preaching and, uh, and after I'm preaching, I pray this two-word prayer. Move spirit. Ah, oh, 
Charles Spurgeon, you said it well. We sing about it all the time. We sing, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Uh, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. We, we, we sing that song, have thy own way, Lord. But I need to tell you something, that as Charles Spurgeon prayed, Spirit moved. Amen. We sometimes don't know the exact way God is going to move. We not, may not know when He is going to move. We may not like how He is going to move because He doesn't always move the way that we want to move. But one one thing for sure is when we allow the Spirit of God to move, God will move in our circumstances. No matter how small, no matter how great, amen, no matter how fresh or how old, God can move in our circumstances. Where there is brokenness, Spirit move. Amen. Where there is, uh, is open, openness, the Spirit of God will move. Where there's a hunger and thirst for righteousness, the Spirit of God will move. God's Spirit always does best. He moves. He moves. And then I'm going to ask Holly to come to the piano this morning. Ezekiel saw the Spirit of God move into a desert, and the desert blossom. Isaiah saw the Spirit of God move in the temple, and the temple was moved. Move, Spirit of God. You see, sometimes as Pentecostals, we think that the Spirit of God, and we need a moving of the Spirit. I'm not minimizing. I'm just trying to show us a different dimension of the Spirit of God this morning. The Spirit of God is able to move in our lives if we will allow Him. What are the things that you need this morning for the Spirit of God to move in? Some of you may have situations in your family that you need God to move in. Some of you may have situations in your finances you need God to move in. Some of you may have situations in your health where you need the Spirit of God to move in. You may say, oh, but the Spirit of God is here this morning just to help so-and-so. They're really going for it. Wait a second. You're putting boundaries on the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God doesn't know boundaries. Amen. The Spirit of God moves. Amen. As He's willing to move. And He moves where He is welcome to move. What did He tell Nicodemus? That the wind blows where it lists us, and thou hearest the sound thereof. Amen. No one tells the wind where it blows. Well, it moves. You may be on a day, and you may be here this morning, you may say, Pastor, I don't feel the Spirit of God moving. It's interesting. Did you ever look at a windmill before on a day where it didn't seem like there was any wind blowing at all? Up on the mountains of West Virginia, where my mom lives, they have put these windmills up <clears throat> for clean energy. And there are some days I think, man, you don't feel the wind, but you go in there. You know why? Because they've reached high enough where the wind is blowing. Sometimes we just need to reach high enough where the wind is blowing so the Spirit of God can walk and move in our life. We don't have to live in darkness and in chaos where there is no light, life, and love. But we can reach high enough where the Spirit of God moves and the light breaks through, there is life and there is love. We all want that. How many of you feel a lot better than you did six months ago in winter? You like those longer days with more light? I like it. I like it. Can we push the pause button, please, here in July? You know why? Because we have more light. We feel better. It is scientifically proven that way. Do you know why in Alaska they have cabin fever, which is known as depression? It's very high, and they use light therapy to help people. It's interesting. You walk around some office buildings where there is no windows or they're sitting in cubicles. 
they will have special lights that are designed to be UV lights that are like sunlight. They don't do it to give somebody a tan. They do it so that someone can feel better because they're getting the ultraviolet light that they need that our body is conditioned for to feel better. Google it. Look it up. It's not uncommon. But spiritually speaking, we've got to have light. And the only way we can do it is by allowing the Spirit of God to blow. So would you let the Spirit of God blow in and give life and light to your situation? And then where there is life, there is love. Some of you may be sitting here and think, I'm not lovable. I don't need love. I'll wash Every one of you in here need to be loved and feel loved, whether you think it or not. Maybe your problem is you've been fed a lie for so long. Maybe you've never really been loved well enough that you realize that need is there. But we all need it. And sometimes the only thing that can do it is just to say, Word of God, blow upon me, breathe upon me. Just know this morning, just because God is bodiless doesn't mean that He's nothingless. Because He is mighty. Feel the breath of God this morning. Move upon you. I don't say that in any condemning way. I say that in an encouraging way. Because today can be different. Because the wind of God is born. If you need the wind of God, we all do. Amen. Would you gather around these altars and front pews and just find a place of prayer and say, Word of God, blow upon me. You don't have borders that keep God from blowing upon you, but God is faithful. Allow the Word of God to blow. Would you gather in this morning?